What's up guys, Rogue9 here and as you may already know with the launch of Operation North Star for Rainbow Six Siege, Ubisoft are reworking how the flash hider and compensator muzzle attachments work with the aim of making them easier to understand. I've spent the entire week doing some serious legwork to understand how these changes will affect the game and what they mean for you. Let's go check it out. First off, before we jump into the tests I ran and the results those delivered, let's quickly check out the clarifications that the devs have provided to help us understand how the new attachments will work. The seasonal patch notes tell us, Flash Hider and Compensator rework changed how the compensator works. It will now be more efficient at mitigating left and right recoil. Flash Hider now only affects the up speed, making the gun climb slower. Well, so far in terms of the precise function of each attachment, this simplistic description is actually as clear as mud and, spoiler alert, my testing has uncovered that one of those statements is not even true. We jump over to the designer notes to see if we can get more insight from there. Muzzle rework. Flash hider. Reduces the speed and intensity of vertical recoil. Compensator reduces the speed and intensity of horizontal recoil. And yada yada yada, we expect that this will make some weapons feel easier to control than before once players begin experimenting, so as always, we will be closely monitoring performance and stats and will adjust as needed. Once again, even with the added paragraphs, this info does not really give us a concrete explanation into how the attachments will work, and that last paragraph, some weapons feel easier to control than before once players begin experimenting, well, that's what we call foreshadowing. But there you go, that's the official information, and so far we have learned Flash Hider, good for vertical recoil, Compensator, good for horizontal recoil, allegedly. Now, how do we confirm these claims and how do we provide more details? It's time for some experiments and step one is for me to prove to you that my methodology is sound and that the results I have obtained are trustworthy. If you aren't really interested in any of the myth-busting process I went through for this video and you just want the cold hard facts, then do check the chapters in the video scroll bar to pick the segments of the video that you are interested in the most. By its very nature, recoil is supposed to be random, and that of course makes precise testing virtually impossible, but for several seasons now, thanks to a very handsome and totally stable genius, we have known of a way to influence the recoil in such a way as to make it perfectly consistent and predictable. If you didn't know about this yet, check out the full details in the video in the top right hand corner now, and also coming up in the end card. So the first thing I did was an acid test to make sure that the results between the current live server and test server builds were comparable and that none of the attachments that are meant to stay the same change in some unexpected way. In the background you've been seeing that very test footage of various guns with no attachments, the muzzle brake, the suppressor and extended barrel, and as you can see the recoil patterns match up perfectly between the test and live servers. Hooray and huzzah! we are now safe in the knowledge that our results will be comparable. The next step is to come up with a method that allows us to deduce the function of the newly revamped attachments and for that I resorted to simple pixel counting in screenshots. How many pixels up and to the side is a bullet with no attachments on the gun minus how many pixels with the attachment and we should get a pretty accurate insight into the scale of the improvement. To prove that this method works, here is the info provided directly by the Ubisoft devs on how the attachments currently work on the live servers and if we gather some recoil samples from say the L85 then we get these results. Here is the table with the first shot vertical recoil in pixels at 1440p, the total vertical recoil before the gun tops out and the total horizontal recoil for that same final bullet. If we calculate the percentage improvement for the three different muzzle attachments, we receive these results. For the flash hider, the first shot recoil is 38.1% smaller, the total vertical recoil is 3% smaller and the total horizontal recoil is 5.4% smaller than with no attachments. 
If we compare these results to the official Ubisoft multipliers, we can see that these numbers are as close to perfect as we could ever have imagined. 37.5% is the expected first shot recall improvement and 5% should have been the improvement to the recall diamond, i.e. the randomizing factor that determines horizontal recoil. The compensator had no influence on vertical recall but an 18% horizontal improvement and again that corresponds near perfectly to the official multipliers. Last but not least, I also ran tests for the muzzle brake and once again the first shot recall mitigation from our results checks out. As crude as it might seem to just blast the patterns onto a wall and then count pixels, the L85 proved that this method is astoundingly accurate. Or so I thought. Because of course it wouldn't be Rainbow Six Siege if things just worked the way they were supposed to. I ran the same proof of concept test with Twitch's F2 and this is where I came across the first apparent bug. When I ran the same test with this gun, the first shot recoil stats were almost perfect once again, but the horizontal stats were off. And after many hours of further testing and analysis, I discovered two reasons for this. The first one is that the recoil for the F2 is bugged on the live servers and also partially on the test servers. We can clearly see this if we overlap the patterns. The results for the L85 show that the muzzle brake has no influence on horizontal recoil at all, all of the shots are perfectly vertically aligned and even the compensator which is supposed to have the strongest influence on horizontal recoil only shows its effects over time. The second and third shots still basically perfectly overlap. Now if we check for the F2, we can see that, ironically, the horizontal offset for the compensator seems to be accurate, with a gradual change from shot to shot, but for the two attachments that are supposed to have very little effect on horizontal movement, already the second shot is only half as far to the left as it should be, 3 pixels instead of 6. So, for whatever reason, the patterns for the muzzle brake and flash hider are significantly horizontally offset from the outset. Fun fact, if we use this knowledge to adjust our overall horizontal offset results, we end up with final stats that once again match the expected multipliers much more closely, and that's at least something. Another fun fact is that on the test servers this bug doesn't appear for the flash hider, only for the muzzle brake because of course even the fucking bugs in this game are inconsistent. Sure, this bug won't really affect your gameplay in any significant way, we're talking about an error of 3 pixels here, but it is a confounding factor that we have to be aware of because it could compromise our test results when trying to accurately determine how the new compensator works. That was problem number one, but there's more. When the recoil of a weapon consistently wanders off to one side, like for instance the L85 drifting mostly to the left, then that gives us very reliable total horizontal offset results when we pick a random bullet impact towards the end of the burst. But when the recoil sways left and right, the risk is that the final results become basically meaningless because the recoil improvements delivered by a muzzle attachment become too small to be measurable. Here is the default recoil for Capitao's M249. Overall, the horizontal movement is not very strong and you can see that towards the top, the pattern starts to come back towards the center. If we overlay the pattern of the compensator, you can see that for three bullets here, the patterns essentially overlap again, giving the impression of no improvement at all. So it's important to pick a bullet with as much horizontal offset as possible to allow for the most accurate measurements. But even then, this is still not enough because I came across one more apparent bug on the live servers. When trying to record horizontal recoil samples, it makes sense to pick guns with a lot of horizontal recoil, right? So why don't we take a look at Ella's Scorpion? This is the Scorpion's default recoil. And here is the recoil with the compensator. Notice the compensator is definitely attached. Can you spot the difference? What about if we put the two side by side? Ok, and now overlapping and switching backwards and forwards between the two. As you can see, the compensator does improve the horizontal recoil for a couple of bullets by the tiniest amount imaginable, but paradoxically the bullets later on in the burst, the ones that drift off to the left the furthest, see practically no improvement at all. That's not right, it makes no sense at all. 
What this test shows us is that right now on the live servers, one of the very few guns in the game where the compensator actually makes sense is also a gun where the compensator appears to be fundamentally broken and delivers almost no value at all. But maybe it's just this specific recoil pattern. Let's try a different one to be sure. This pattern is fundamentally different from the first one, but still, the compensator delivers essentially no benefit at all in the later part of the burst. Great, so there's one more bug in the system that poses a risk to the integrity of our results. <sighs> now, with all that said and all of these risks identified, I believe that my pixel counting method is still useful and while the results may vary a little, this is actually worth more than getting the intended multipliers from the devs because my tests will show the actual in-game performance and not the theoretical value that may or may not work as intended. Okay, you basically only have one week left until Father's Day and longtime friends and supporters of the channel Ridge Wallet still make great gifts you should consider. I've been using the lightest version of their high-tech wallet range over the last week, the Carbon Fiber model. Check that out. Take advantage of the limited time 15% discount offer by going to ridge.com slash rogue9 and using the code dad15 at checkout. If you're watching this video in future, then you can also use the code rogue9 for a 10% discount instead. Time to finally check out how both of these attachments function on the test servers, starting with the flash hider. For the last five and a half years, this attachment has worked by providing a significant first shot recoil reduction and minimal horizontal recoil reduction throughout a burst. It also provided a reset time improvement, reducing the reset time after a burst from 450 milliseconds to 350 milliseconds. From next Monday and onwards after the launch of Operation North Star, the flash hider will no longer provide a reset time improvement at all. The reset time will stay at 450 milliseconds and the muzzle brake will now be the only attachment that improves reset time. And instead of a compromise between vertical and horizontal recoil improvement, the new flash hider will only improve the vertical recoil component. But crucially, this will not just be for the first shot of a burst, but for every single shot, much like the benefit provided by the vertical grip. Overall, I measured a total recoil reduction of 15.8%, 15.7%, 16.7%, 14.5% and 16%, with first shot recoil reductions of 12.7, 12.7, 13.7, 11 and 13.3% respectively. My explanation of why the overall recoil reduction is greater than that of the first shot is that the first shot recoil multiplier is still being added and interferes with the results there, making them seem smaller than they actually are, but that's just a minor detail. The bottom line is that in terms of countering vertical recoil, the flash hider is getting a huge, immense, gargantuan buff compared to how that attachment has worked up until now. It is nutty how powerful this tool is now. And if you also use the vertical grip, the newly resulting muzzle climb is an absolute joke. You barely need any vertical recoil compensation at all in order to keep your gun on target. Uh, we uh, expect that this will make some weapons feel easier to control than before once the players begin experimenting. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. If you provide a massive buff to an attachment, of course it's going to make things easier. Who would have guessed? The patch notes for the compensator also mention that this attachment is getting more efficient, i.e. buffed, but my test results demonstrate that this is in fact a lie. Remember, for the last five and a half years, the compensator has provided a 17.75% horizontal recoil improvement, or at least that's what it's supposed to do. As the Scorpion clearly showed, it apparently doesn't always work as intended. Now, my test server results show that the overall horizontal recoil improvement coming to the game with the new patch is going to be 22.5%, 16.9%, 13.8%, 14%, and 19.2% for the handful of weapons that I tested. And when we visually compare the live and TS build results, we can see that sometimes the compensator is better. Just by a little bit, but still. Sometimes it's about the same.
and sometimes it's actually worse than before. Not only is the effectiveness of the new compensator kind of inconsistent with percentage improvements between 13.8 all the way up to 22.5, but the comparison to the old compensator that is still live right now is also totally inconsistent. So in terms of providing a concrete result, in terms of how much the compensator will improve horizontal recoil, I don't really feel that I can give you an answer because the effects are so varied from gun to gun. Some will apparently benefit a lot, others not so much. And even though the Scorpion is on the low end of that range at only 14.5% improvement, at least after the patch the compensator will no longer be broken for that gun. So every cloud has a silver lining I guess. Final conclusion, which muzzle attachments should you now pick for which type of gun if you're looking purely for recoil mitigation? So we're not considering the suppressor or extended barrel here, they have been covered in their own dedicated videos on the channel in the past. First off, the muzzle brake. It doesn't change, so the advice remains the same. It is the only attachment you should consider for single-shot weapons such as pistols and semi-auto rifles. And when it comes to fully automatic rifles, it might still be worth considering, but only on guns that have a strong first-shot recoil multiplier and only if you're going to be firing predominantly short bursts. Uh, check this out. If we take the L85 as an example here and we switch between the new flash hider and muzzle brake, you can see that the sixth shot in each burst pretty much lines up for both attachments. What that means is that up until the sixth shot, the muzzle brake still provides a much smoother and overall more controllable burst, but the longer the burst goes on after that, the more the advantage of the flash hider begins to add up for a much better shooting experience. If you're firing longer bursts or if the gun you're using is not as harsh on the first shot, then the flash hider is the new number one attachment to go for. After the massive buff it will be receiving, it will be super effective at mitigating muzzle climb. You can choose to combine this with the vertical grip where possible for a frankly ridiculous 40% reduction in vertical recoil or instead you can use the new flash hider in combination with the angled grip for decent recoil reduction and blisteringly good aim down sight time. And finally, even though the effectiveness of the compensator seems to vary from gun to gun, you should still consider this attachment for weapons that have extreme and difficult to control horizontal recoil properties. The Scorpion, Vector and some of the machine pistols come to mind, although keep in mind that some of those are also seeing improved default recoils coming live with the new season. What are your thoughts on these changes? Which attachments will you be using the most and do you think the flash hider is going to be nerfed? Leave your comments below. As mentioned earlier, if a behind the scenes insight into how Rainbow Six Siege works is something you're interested in, then the video breaking down the recoil system might just be the right one for you to watch next. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.